Next, on Elena News First Investigates, people accused of crimes stuck in jail with no legal representation across the country. He has no help. He has no one to turn to. It's not an exaggeration to say it is a constitutional crisis. A problem forcing judges to dismiss serious crimes, eroding the public's trust in the criminal justice system. It's broken. Public defense in our county is broken at this point. And a growing concern innocent people could be sent to prison as a consequence. It should bring chills to all of us when we realize that any of us can be accused of a crime. Our investigation this sixth starts now. Hi, I'm Andy Parati. The Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution guarantees all of us the right to an attorney if we can't afford one. But we uncovered most state public defender offices, including Georgia, are chronically understaffed, leaving people charged with crimes without legal representation for months, often languishing behind bars. So before I ask you any questions, you need to understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have him or her with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. A detective reads Traquel Van Merco his rights, arrested for his alleged involvement in an armed home robbery in 2018. You have information, but no proof. I was not there. When Traquel declined to answer questions, the investigator pushed back. I'm not some little punk that you deal with on the street. Are we clear? Yeah. Are we clear? Yeah. So take a step back and a deep breath and calm down. The 18-year-old, who had never been in serious trouble in the past, faced up to 65 years in prison. And you could be here for a long time. Traquel couldn't afford an attorney or the $25,000 bail. So he sat in jail in Wood County, Wisconsin, and waited for his court-appointed attorney. His mom and sister say Traquel called the state's public defender office every day asking for a lawyer. And he's like, Mom, they literally laughed at me on the phone like, yeah, right, you're waiting for a lawyer. You know, like there's a lot of other people too. Traquel's fellow inmates witnessed him struggle too. Like he, he was calling for, for weeks to get a public defender. They kept saying, oh, we don't have one, we don't have one. On the Davis court hearing, Traquel walked into court alone. According to court transcripts, the judge told him you do have a right to ask questions of the officer, although if you had an attorney here, they would tell you not to do so. At the end of the 30-minute hearing, the judge decided there was enough evidence to charge the teen. When Traquel tried to protest the ruling, citing no representation, the judge told him that will be something you can discuss with your attorney. So not only you have this young teen that has never been in serious troubles trying to navigate the system, but he's alone. He has no guidance from anybody. Later that night in jail, Traquel took a shower, went to church, tied a blanket around his cell door and neck, and let go. Cameron, okay, this is Lee at the Wood County Jail. We need an ambulance as soon as possible. He has the call, but we need an ambulance here. I remember laying in my bed and I heard her yell up the stairs. All of a sudden, I just hear, Trey hung himself, Trey hung himself, so. What do you think drove him to do what he did? I think the detectives and the, uh, not having a public defender. Do you think he would have taken his own life if he had a public defender that day? No. No. I just think it would have given him hope. He would have had a voice. He would have been able to say, you know, this is what happened. You know, he would have been able to have somebody there to guide him through the system you know and it's like everybody makes mistakes but when you're in a situation like that it's your right to have that representation there and it was essentially taken away from him wisconsin's public defender office says agency staff made approximately 300 calls and emails the private attorney certified to take state public defender cases but did not find the teen a lawyer in time for his court date. The state suffered from a public defender shortage when Traquel needed one 
Four years later today, it's worse than ever. We have a shortage of attorneys in central and northern Wisconsin. There is a constitutional crisis because of delays linked to a lack of public defenders. That, that's the challenge in virtually every city um, in our state. A fundamental right to an attorney falling apart across the country. In Oregon, the state has one third of the public defenders it needs, according to the American Bar Association. In New Mexico, it needs 67% more lawyers to adequately represent defendants. And in Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing good. It's easy to spot the problem nearly every day in Fulton County Court. People charged with crimes waiting for a court-appointed attorney. How long that gonna be? If I had an answer, I'd give it to you. Um, we are working through um, an unacceptable crisis, where, and you're not the only one. In Fulton County alone, court records show 113 people indicted for crimes did not have an attorney this past August. Many in jail for months, 29 of them longer than a year, nearly all of them black, including Demario Phillips. How are you today? Yeah. The 19-year-old charged with murder sat in jail 11 months and did not have a lawyer for this court hearing. He says he's innocent. Demario's parents asked the judge for help. We're trying. We can't afford Right. The prices are, like, so high. I want to be real clear. The expectation is not, why don't you go get a lawyer? The state of Georgia has an obligation to get a lawyer for your son. And the state of Georgia is not living up to its obligation right now. Frida and Demario Sr. are the teen's parents. What was your reaction when he said that? I was shocked. We keep doing the same dance. We go to these status hearings knowing that they haven't found him a lawyer yet. That problem needs to be fixed soon. And if it's not, I think you're gonna start reading about it in the newspapers with lawsuits and that may be what it takes. Robert McBurney is the Fulton County Superior Court judge behind the camera. What we have right now is akin to the scenarios that we decry when we say, well, look at the criminal justice system in China or Iran, where people can get scooped up and held without charges or without it being made clear what's going on. And most importantly, no due process. They, they're stuck. They're silenced. And they don't have a next court date other than to come back and see the judge who says, this is a travesty. It should bring chills to all of us when we realize that any of us can be accused of a crime. John Rapping is president of Gideon's Promise, a national public defender advocacy organization. Undoubtedly, there are people sitting in jail accused of crimes who are innocent. We can't possibly know that until they get a lawyer who can gather information and shine light on what actually happened. So. Having a lawyer early is the only way we can feel confident that people that are incarcerated actually committed the crimes that they're accused of committing. A failure in the criminal justice system impacting the poor, including Traquel Van Marco. I mean, my brother he was never in serious trouble. We never expected this to happen to him. It shouldn't have happened to him. He shouldn't have been put in a situ situation where he lost hope and he felt his only way out was to take his life. He was 18. He had so much more life to live. Coming up, the impact to crime victims and the unprecedented moves some judges are taking in response to the shortage. It's eroding the trust in our system, the legitimacy of the criminal system. That's dangerous. Well, I wish you were here in the morning because it is something these guys are working. Jay Blythe takes us behind the scenes of his dry cleaning business, Bee Cleaners, a Portland, Oregon staple since 1951. <laughs> Conveyor belts, usually full of clothes, show signs of economic strain. But our expenses are spiraling upwards, our labor spiraling upwards. A business owner struggling to survive hit with another setback in September. Someone broke two of his windows, costing him $1,200 each to replace. It's compounding the pain and agony. Yeah, it really is. Police immediately made an arrest. Blake thought the man would face consequences for the crime. 
Instead, court records show a judge released the men hours later because the state of Oregon did not have a public defender to represent him. How does that make you feel? Um, I, I don't want to say that we feel that downtown porn is lawless, but it's certainly, I, I mean, if you go down, downtown, there's graffiti, there's boards everywhere. So it just, it just kind of fits what's happening in, in, in the city. What's happening is a constitutional crisis in Portland. People arrested for crimes, but no court-appointed attorney to represent them required by law. According to the American Bar Association, Oregon has one-third of the public defenders it needs, a systemic problem we found happening from coast to coast. In Portland, the county seat of Manoma County, judges have dismissed at least 173 felony cases due to the shortage, cases involving property crimes, stolen vehicles, and domestic violence. It's broken. Uh, public defense in our county is broken at this point. Mike Smith is the Manoma County District Attorney. What kind of message do you think this sends the crime victims? Oh, it's a terrible message. And what it leads to, I think, is a lack of trust in the system. You know, I came forward, I reported this crime. I expect there to be accountability. And now you're telling me that because of some decision or lack of resources at a different level of government, uh, my case was dismissed? It doesn't make sense. It's not just happening here in Oregon. We've uncovered other court systems across the country taking similar drastic measures to respond to the crisis. In Wisconsin this year, a judge dismissed drug charges against this man after the 46-year-old waited in jail more than 100 days for the state to find him a public defender. And in response to shortages in 2004, Massachusetts' highest court ruled that defendants who wait for counsel more than 45 days are entitled to have their charges dismissed. Steven Singer is the former executive director of Oregon's Public Defender Office. Not only is it appropriate, I think it's actually constitutionally required, and I wish there were more judges across the country that would exercise that necessary power, because that's the only way you're going to fix the problem. A problem eroding the public's trust in the criminal justice system, while the accused and victims suffer the consequences of inaction. I, I don't have the solution, no. You just want to fix. I just want to fix. Up next, the head of Georgia's public defense defends her agency, and attorneys explain why they resigned because of her. I absolutely would not have left, but for the turmoil in the office. All right. Good morning, everyone. Tony Turner. Mr. Turner here. Sheriff deputies forget to bring an inmate before a judge for a scheduled hearing this past September in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Well, he was requested, so I'm not sure what happened there. So Janie Weaver argues the case on the defendant's behalf. They were put in a motion for dismissal due to lack of no uh, counsel. I spoke with you several times. You also stated that his rights have been violated due to the lack of counsel. We're, we're trying to get the resolve today. She's talking about Tony Turner held on sex trafficking charges he says he did not commit, one of 10 charged in the same crime. He sat in jail for nearly five months with no court appointed attorney to represent him. Which is why the cameras are here, because they are here to see what how this outcome is going to come out. Weaver is Turner's fiance. She filed this handwritten motion to dismiss the case herself. Are you an attorney? No, I'm not. What do you do for a living? I am a certified nurse assistant, and I also work for Amazon. So he's kind of like stuck. He doesn't have no representation at all, no help at all, none, besides the little bit that I give him. Turner is not alone. According to records from the Georgia Public Defender Council, the agency responsible for appointing attorneys to people who can't afford one, at least 620 people charged with crimes in the state did not have a lawyer this past summer. Some in jail for months. Judges in Fulton County, the state's largest, calling it a constitutional crisis. And it is an unacceptable crisis that there are people sitting incarcerated, not able to move their case forward because the system can't find them a lawyer.
In August, the Southern Center for Human Rights threatened litigation if the state doesn't fix the problem, writing in this letter to the agency that the Georgia Public Defenders Council is in breach of its clear mandatory statutory responsibility with respect to hundreds of indigent persons accused of crimes. Amateo Ali is the agency's director. How do you respond to that? We're signing our clients attorneys as soon as we know about them. To say there's a constitutional crisis, I, take an, um, I disagree with that. The director says she joined the agency during the height of the pandemic, inheriting staffing shortages. Earlier this year, she helped increase employee salaries by 6% and created a system she claims automatically assigns attorneys within 72 hours, claiming the agency now has enough attorneys to represent defendants. How can you characterize and say you have enough when you have so many other people saying that it's a crisis. So these are people who don't know what's going on in-house. Even judges. Even judges. Because, see, when you don't have the whole story, you only base your information on what you have. She blames judges for not notifying her office when defendants show up to court without representation, saying that could be one reason her office doesn't always know about unrepresented clients. I've only been in this position for two years. But in my 32 years of being with the public defender system, in one capacity or the other, this last two years have been the most phenomenal. Do you buy that? No. 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 These six former state and county public defenders disagree. No. I absolutely would not have left, no. but for the turmoil in the office. And the All left their jobs since Director Ali joined the agency in March 2020. At this moment, we're, lo we're bleeding. Uh, from our staffing right now. And all blame her for not doing enough to support agency staff. Camille Reddick worked at the agency for more than a decade. I did not leave. I was terminated after I began to yell at the top of my lungs that the way we were handling business and the way we were treating persons who could not afford an attorney was in violation of the Constitution. Mary Beth Snyder, David Cooper, and Linda Day say the agency didn't provide basic office supplies to do their jobs. Things like paper, pens, right. envelopes. I couldn't find folders for no. a long time. They took away everything. They told us we would have offices and they're like, oh no, just kidding, no offices. While they quit the agency, she still represents defendants for the state agency as a contract attorney in Clayton County, just outside of Atlanta. I have 500 clients now. 500? 500. My trial partner has 500. Is that manageable? No, it's not. You're pissing on fires as they come up because the, there's no other way to do it. So cases don't really get looked at until they show up on a trial calendar. Do you think that's manageable? She was not a contractor when she was she here. She is currently a contract attorney in Clayton County. In Clayton County, and now let me explain to you how the system works. Is that manageable? It is not manageable, but it would be unfortunate for Clayton County to allow that to happen, and I don't believe that is true. It was true. Take a look. The state's case management system shows Day's caseload actually increased to 687, just days after our interview with the director. A shocking lack of transparency. Brandon Bullard is the former director of the agency's appellate division responsible for appeals, an important layer of public defense that ensures verdicts are fair. Two years ago, Director Ali proposed cutting a million dollars from his office to address budget deficits during the pandemic. One, it was the first I heard of it, I was the director of that office. Two, coincidentally, a million dollars was roughly the collective salaries of, for myself and for the entire division? For the entire office, yeah. Why would you not speak with him knowing that he's the head of a division in your agency before never, making those cuts? I never met Mr. Bullard. And you're talking about five disgruntled employees who are no longer here? I left because I had no faith that the present leadership was going to be invested in the quality of representation mm -hmm. or I would have any respect for the people who were doing the work. Whatever reason people are leaving and you see that your ability to represent people is being compromised, it is incumbent upon you to respond to that and ensure that we don't get to this hellacious place that we are currently. Your Honor, if I may speak. The day Weaver asked the judge to dismiss her fiance's case, 
two other inmates appeared in court without legal representation. Do you have a lawyer? Has anyone come to speak with you? No. No? In each case, the judge acknowledged the defendant's constitutional rights were violated. His suggestion, contact the civil rights organization currently threatening to sue the state. Did you all call the Southern Center? Did we call who? The Southern Center. What does that say about the system? The system has failed us. This past November, a congresswoman in Oregon filed federal legislation that could fund up to $250 million in grants for state public defender offices. And in response to our investigation, a Georgia state senator telling us he hopes the legislature can address this issue this coming session. We'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Thank you.